Hello. So now today we are going to start with various kinds of cloud computing architectures. We'll see different kind of cloud computing architecture that are basic, and we'll have like Web 2.0. We'll discuss about mashups, RSS feed, Hadoop, SDFS, Storm, various cloud, Google architecture, Eucalyptus, Ruby on Rails. In Web 2.0, it's like feature of Web 2.0. Web 2 can host a home page. So, like Google Sites, you have heard about. Anyone can make Google Sites. Google websites could be made. Then search could be possible. On efficient search on a website could be possible. RSS feeds could be possible. You subscribe to some RSS feed. And you'll able to get news and all the uh, information from that website. Then chat, <coughs> like Google chat is possible, Facebook chat is possible, WhatsApp chat is possible. So every social media platform like Instagram, Twitter, they have chat box. Then sharing of uh, some views could be possible with this. You can post, you can tweet. These are sharing. Then personalized website could also be possible. Like uh, in Google website or there are various websites, uh, deployment companies are there. You make a web, web page according to your need and deploy that website on that. Then mashups means two, three different services are integrated together and you can use that integrated service. Then podcasting means audio could be listened. Video casting could be possible. YouTube is there for doing video casting, live video streaming. Then focus on the community is more, means you can form a community group by yourself. Online collaboration could be possible means you can have multiple persons working together, multiple group of people working together. Tagging could be possible. You can tag each other. Then mashup is basically something like, it's a phenomenon to create new services on web page. So mashup means phenomenon, means information of creation of new web, web services with the help of collaboration of various other web services or resource. What are the other, like you can add on a service presentation as well as data information representation, like functionalities. And these are the things that you can use to combine two, three web service together or two, three resources together. So these are the kind of mashups that you can create. What are the benefits of this? The benefits of this are like innovation. You can use Google Maps as well as search engine of Google. So you'll have two features as well as you can use translator. So these three things you can add on to your own website and you can make your website more lively, active. You can add your work location in the Google Maps. You, if you are your company has a particular language to deal with, so you can use translator to translate it into that language. Then in the search engine, you can find out various kind of information on your own website. And the, the business insights could be there. Agility could be increased. Faster development could be done. Reduced cost for development could be done with this. Of course, whenever you could be able to do re-engineering or reuse of something, then cost could be reduced. Easy and faster integration could be possible. Widgets could be added, readily available or reusable software could be done. Then immediate benefit could be helpful for that. Less cost could be there. The rich ecosystems could be there. There are may not be original raw source of data, 
but you can have enriched quality of service with the data of other services so you can have data collected from other services but it's not necessarily that you could be able to have a original data of your own because you are doing mashup mashup is basically divided into three different layer what are these three different layer presentation html xhtml css javascript ajax api you know about this this is front end then in the middle there is a web service how web service is process so xml http request xml remote procedure call json remote procedure call soap restful web service so these are the kind of web services which works in between then fundamental data could be stored in the form of xml json kml so it could be used such that these language could be used for sending storing and receiving some data these are the technology so next rss feed so rss feed basically is an xml language for syndicating subscribed content so whatever you subscribe you'll get the information of that subscription how you do the use in the youtube you'd go and subscribe so that is rss feed that you'll get that this channel had uploaded new kind of video new videos so you'll get information you can go on facebook and subscribe to a particular friend so whenever that particular friend post some some post so you'll get information that this is, has been posted then register register with an organization or web so you go and register with that particular feature that you want to get news or information feeds or post so who created an rss feed so basically what happened rss feed is an specific thing for some of the website like some advanced web web service based companies like uh, ieee have some rss feed so whenever new publication happens in a particular journal you'll get the information whenever new information whenever new news comes in a particular domain of a website you'll get the information so these are the specific kind of rss feed user is automatically updated with the rss feed with the notification of a new item so these are in a simple layman language these are ter termed as notifications then information is received quickly at a location so you will get all the information at a particular location then we'll discuss the most basic cloud computing architecture that is hadoop so hadoop is basically apache product and project that are been developed in open source so you can also contribute to the hadoop development if you wish and hadoop is reliable scalable and distributed computing platform this is doc cutting who invented the hadoop and he named this hadoop on his son's toy that which is stuff as which is an elephant so his son named his toy elephant as hadoop so this doc cutting named its product as hadoop and software library and framework it's a kind of software library as well as a framework so both the things are there means you have some libraries to include in java programming as well as there is a framework or middle where which works then uh, for distributed processing of large data set across clusters of computers which are using simple programming models so there are various distributed processing or large data set uh, processing tools are there uh, in this cloud computing for creation of clusters among various computers and you can run and deploy some programming models on them that is 
simply said as map reduce that we'll discuss then locality of reference means data is at the same place you just transfer a small piece of code over network so that's why you process the whole data at a single machine and whatever the process result you transfer that so this is what it means by locality of reference means data will stay at the same place where uh, it is then scalability you can add keep on adding new machines and you, in that way you can have thousands of machine working with the same middleware with the help of hadoop distributed file system then each were offering their local computational and storage capability so thousands of machine that are said as nodes so these nodes offers their computational power as well as storage power and you'll have the single cluster you say it as a single cluster Th means your program that you do programming of map reduce remain same among 10 100 or thousands of nodes so you'll have advantage of creating cluster then corresponding performance improvement could be there you will have a better performance and improved quality with this all these things then fault tolerant file system could be there like detecting and handling some failures like delivering some high available content so these are the basic fault tolerant and file system property of hdfs means it can detect and handle failure whether it, there is some failure or not whether there is some uh, problem with that and you can it always delivers high quality high availability and faster response time so hadoop distributed file system hdfs was named like this and it has been modeled based upon google file system so originally around 2000 google file system was being invented and it, that has been replicated and copied as hadoop distributed file system in uh, around 2008 and there's a parallel programming computing environment in the hadoop which is named as map reduce so what are the components of hadoop hadoop has various components like pig hive h base zookeeper etc these are the components of hadoop you can go and see and work on detail in this and we'll discuss what is hadoop distributed file system architecture so hadoop distributed file system architecture looks like this there's a name node which actually contains metadata of all the data to so metadata means where what is the name of that file how, how many replications are there and where these are stored in which node they are being stored then you have data node after name node name node is a master node you can assume and data nodes are basically slave so these data nodes slave stores various data and it creates replication over each other means they know where the file has been replicated and this all information were kept at name node so client do what client reads the data from data node whatever being asked to by the name node means first client requests the uh, name node for the particular kind of data and that client will get data location and from that location it uh, name node redirects client towards that node so the workload is been is been reduced so what it we can say simply name node stores indexing of all the data that's why google file system google search is so fast because whenever you search 
the request goes to particular name node and with that particular name node which is having that index of your search the search will be redirected to the particular data node and that data node will serve you as the result so that is the power of indexing so search engines have major power as indexing then these client could also able to write some data on various data nodes and then these information are being whatever they write they are being reflected on name node and a new metadata is being created and this is the simple name node as master and name node as master and secondary nodes are name node secondary name nodes are there and then slaves are data node so there could be one name node as master and two secondary name node so any number of secondary name node could be created then thereafter various slave nodes are there in the hadoop workforce and cluster so hadoop distributed file system have name node what is the uh, properties and what are the functionalities of name node we'll discuss this and then we'll discuss functionality and properties of data node so name node do what manages file system what it manages it manages mapping of file to block and block and to date uh, for the data node so mapping of file to blocks and block are been mapped to the data node what does it mean manage of file means there is some mapping of file is been there for each block and these blocks are been stored in data node and this management of file system maintains the status with the data node then there are two features heartbeat and block report heartbeat basically have data node that sends heartbeat at the regular interval if heartbeat is not received data node is declared as dead the data node sends heartbeat to the name node at regular interval if heartbeat is not received then data node is set set to be dead so that data node sends what heartbeat at regular interval are you getting means there is a request that response that data node keeps on sending to the name node that particular data node is alive and it is still surviving and there is no failure at the particular data node so name node always knows that this data node is still working if a particular heartbeat doesn't come from data node then name node would assume that that particular data node is dead then block reports data node sends list of blocks on it means whatever data has been stored in a data node were sent this list were been sent to name node and this name node is used to keep check of the health of sdfs so proper replication number of replication all these things are block report were being managed by name node <laughs> then data node data node basically do what replication data node on failure it uh, it basically replicates properly that there has to be three images or two images or four images so whenever there is some failure <coughs> proper amount of data replication at various data node takes place so replication also been done at 
disk failure suppose data node is working but a particular disk is being failed then block corruption could also be prop could also be take place so the block corruption could be managed in such condition then data integrity what is data integrity you have studied about this data integrity as checksum checksum of each of the block means block should have a particular checksum and if the checksum is correct then that data is proper so these checksum are being stored in the hidden file i think its extension is dot crc so dot crc uh, stores a checksum of these blocks and it cross checks means there is stored checksum and with that checksum it cross checks the data has the same checksum or not then it will if it is having same checksum then it will be said as data integrity is proper and rebalancing balancer tool are there means additional new nodes are being added and decommissioning and deletion of some files would take place what is rebalancing rebalancing is basically balancing of new node means add whenever you add a new node so properly management of data replication would be done at that new node decommissioning means if a older node is been removed then what it will do it will do proper replication number of replication means two replication three replication four replication would be managed by the hadoop data node then deletion of some file suppose one file has been deleted who will manage that data node will manage that it will ask for the copy of that file that is replicated on some other node and that file would be managed then hadoop data replication how it, it has been done it has been done like name node have what information of file name number of replication where it is been stored block id was there then user would have user have samir data part so these are the example you will have this data node is there so the block one is been stored at here at first node at that third node so block 1 is stored at first node and third node similarly block 2 has been stored at node 1 node 2 and node 4 and so on so this is how the replication of a particular block takes place then we'll discuss about map reduce so in map reduce how it has been done so there are two parts that are been there are in the hadoop distributed system so first part is provided by user means some information is been provided by user and some framework properties and functionalities are been provided by hadoop so you do not need to manage these things so these things are being coded by a core software engineering coder who knows distributed computing a lot so they had already coded much information for your program so you just need to program what map reduce and then map reduce will take help of automatically it will take help of hadoop framework and hadoop framework already had too much coding in it so what it does you first provide job configuration means 
where the data has been stored what are the information it has storing what are the properties that it contains and all these information are there and what is input location what is output location it contains and then input format what is input format what is input location so it, it the both the things input format and input location will go, go to hadoop framework and hadoop framework would do what splitting of that particular input and do the distribution of that input so this is already been done by hadoop framework you do not need to worry about splitting and distribution then mapping of a function could be done what what does it mean mapping of the function you have to create so you have to write a mapping function and that mapping function will go to start an individual map task means that master node will say to the various slave node that start doing mapping and start doing processing of that mapping code you send what it does hadoop framework thereafter hadoop framework do shuffling of the data and then partitioning and shorting of that data so so that map map function would be efficient and it outputs map intermediate output and what it does thereafter it does shorting of the map result means mapping is being done means code will be executed by hadoop framework and then shorting of the map output will take place that will be passed for the reduce task reduce task so number of reduce task and been declared by the user that user will say that there will be four nodes which will be, will be used for reduce task then reduce function will also be passed by user and reduce function means coding you have to do map coding you have to do reduce coding you have to do you have to put the input location you have to put input format then reduce processing will start and reduce processing will start it will from the mapping output so whatever mapping output would be there you have to start processing from that and you will have to start individual reduce task you have to start individual reduce task thereafter what you have to mention you have to mention the output type means what should be the format of output you have to mention what should be the uh, look output value type means what is the key value and key type and value type means key hash map you have studied i hope so key value pairs are there you mention that and then the key value pairs are uh, start processing at individual reduce task means every node will start reducing accordingly and it will be collected as the final output because you mentioned a particular format that you want to output means text image or something else and location of that uh, storage where it has to be uh, the final output should be stored so the collection of final output is been done by the hadoop framework so this uh, i hope that these two things are been clear that user have to mention these information job configuration input format input location map programming code for function then number of reduced task means number of nodes then reduce coding function output key type value type for output output format programmer has to mention output location programmer has to mention so these are the coder has to mention thereafter what hadoop framework provides hadoop framework provides input splitting and distribution thereafter starting of individual map task at particular nodes then shuffling and partitioning of the out mapping output then merge short for the mapping output and 
each output is being moved to a particular reduced task, reduced node, then it, it will start reducing at the individual level. Thereafter, collection of final output would be done at Hadoop framework. Then what is the format of input output? So the format of input output are key values. So map function would do key one, value one, key one, value one, list key two, value two, key two, value two. Reduce task would do key two, value two. List task would write key three, value three. So what does it mean? First of all, map function would read as key one, value one. So it will start reading as key one value one. Thereafter, it will output key two value two. And then reduce task would do what? Key two and list of value twos. Means key two would be unique, but there would be many value two. There would be many value two. Because this is a hash map function. So there is list of value two. So this key two and list of value two would be reduced again and key three and value three is being created what does it all means so suppose you have a classroom suppose i am the master node and i have a classroom so what i'll say i'll pick uh, there is a basically three nodes means three rows in the classroom three different rows in the classroom so what i'll say to three first benchers that count the number student in your row so first student would say first bencher would say that there is 10 students in my row including me second row back first venture would say there's 15 students in my row and third row first venture would say there are eight total uh, students in my row including me so what happens i will get the information in first first row there are 10 students and in second row there are 15 students who are sitting then in third row eight students are sitting so how many students are there i will add up i'll say 33 students are there so what i did i did master slave processing why we did because to do the efficient and faster counting how it has been faster it is faster because there are three students who are counting these students in a separate row so first row has been counted in parallel second row is also been counted third row is also being counted in parallel so i do not need to count 33 students in a sequential process but in fact there are three students who had counted three rows in parallel and i got result in parallel and what i did i did reduce task who i am i am the programmer of mapper i am the programmer of mapper i said a uh, statement that you first ventures have to count the number of students sitting in your row so i did a mapping coding and then what i did i did when the result came out map map result came up what i did i did reduce how i did reduce i did i written a code for doing the reduce coding i sum up 10 plus 15 plus 8 so i sum up information of all the three students who had given me the information so 10 plus 15 plus 8 so these are the two coding that i have done mapping coding and reduce coding this is a simple example but what if there are thousands of rows in a table in a relational table there are thousands of rows 
if you assume 10000s of rows if you assume 1 million rows so how do you manage if 1 billion rows how will you manage so you will assign 1000 computers to each will process what each will process what 10000 rows so 10000 rows we are being processed by each of the node and it will give result to you and you will do the reduce coding so you will do the coding for reduction and you will get the information how you will do you will do with the help of key value pairs key one value one and this will generate list of key two and value two because key two is unique you will have a list of value two and this will create a list of key three and value three so this key three and value three is the result that is 33 in our case for counting of student so this is how it works what map reduce cannot do so map reduce cannot do inter process communication what does it mean means it will not able to transfer the information of two th three different process what does it mean means once you run a map it will run you cannot have a threading over it. So Java threading you have studied. So this is inter-process communication. It is not allowed to do any inter-process communication between mapping is running and when reduce is running. Means what does it mean? It is a simple sequential course, code. Most simple sequential code has been written in mapping part and most simple uh, sequential code has been written in reduce part so it cannot do inter process communication means inter process threading you cannot do what it cannot do data sharing so it's not possible to share data in between a map running and in between a reduce running whatever data it is running in the map will be processed and final output will be generated and whatever result is being generated in reduced task would be done in a single shot so there is no possible of data sharing and this is this is where map reduce cannot work means data sharing cannot work and you cannot write recursive function if you try to write recursive function it will not work it will not work properly so what does it mean why these three map reduce tasks would not be done because mapping is will be a simple code reduce will be a simple code without thread without data sharing without recursion this is what it means then uh, we'll see an example of map reduce for word count so there is a large book available with you suppose there's a textbook like Bhagavad Gita and Bible so you have various lines in them and you just input these lines of textbooks of that particular textbook and that lines were broken into various words and this would be outputted as like key as word and value as one what it does after that it will reduce start reducing and you have done coding for that input would be word particular word and one would be there and what will be the output word and number of times it is occurring means keep on adding plus value plus value plus value so what it does the overall map reduce of word count would look like this suppose a book contains information of a deer beer river car car river deer car beer so these are the words in the book this is a very small example we are discussing there could be billions of word and millions of word could be possible but we are seeing very small example so what it does it will do splitting so three parts it will split deer beer river as the first part is stored in the first node and in the second node, car, car, river is been stored. In the third node, deer, car, beer is been stored. Then mapping will take place. Mapping will say what? 
की एंड वैल्यू एज वन तो डी आर कॉमा वन बी आर कॉमा वन रिवर कॉमा वन दिस इज आउटपुट सिमिलरली इन द नोट टू वॉट विल बी द मैप आउटपुट कार वन कार वन रिवर वन देर आफ्टर इन द नोट थ्री डी आर वन कार वन बी आर वन देर आफ्टर शफलिंग वुड टेक प्लेस एंड दिस शफलिंग वॉज बी डन बाय मैप हडू फ्रेमवर्क तो बी आर वन बी आर वन अपिंग टू टाइम्स तो इट विल कम एट अ पर्टिकुलर पोजिशन देन कार वन कार वन कार वन एट अवर सेकेंड पोजिशन देन डी आर वन डी आर टू एट द थर्ड पोजिशन एंड रिवर वन रिवर वन एट द अनादर फोर्थ पोजिशन सो देर आफ्टर वॉट रिड्यूस विल डू After this shuffling, shorting, reduce will do add on means word, comma, value plus means number of time it is occurring one plus one plus one it will keep on adding so it will happen beer comma two car comma three deer comma two and river comma two and this reduce will produce final result as output and what would be the output final output it is beer two car three dr2 revert revert to so this is how a map reduce works for word count and this is for the small small data set but what if there is hundreds of books over there so there will be hundreds of strings hundred of strings are split into various lines in the nodes and then mapping would be done for the each word and shuffling would be done for the each word and reduction would be done for the each word and you'll get the final result means you'll get the frequency of word so whatever word is occurring too much larger number of times you will say that this is frequent word and it is important information any doubt or any query or we'll discuss in the next class after this we will study storm which is a real time stream processing any query any doubt okay in we'll meet in the next class bye